right on the night. We're all right on the night. It will be. It'll be wonderful if people, people can wonderful. hear us, if people can see us, um, and it'll be fine. Okay, so, but you're very, very, very welcome to episode one, officially. Of We're the official, are we? We're official now, yeah, yeah. We've made it through the pilot stage. Okay. We've been commissioned. We should know what we're doing this time. We've been commissioned, and we're wearing... I'm going to not trip up over baskets. Manai. Is it Manai or So we said we said that we would twin today and here we are. We're twinning for you. So we will get into the pattern details. All you need to know for now is it's called Manus. It's called Manus and it's by Yamagara. Yamagara. And it's lovely, lightweight, lovely stash busting thing. Because you use the bits of leftovers, you can dyes from other bits of leftovers as well. I did. I did. I did. I used leftovers from my granddaughter's. Love not. There you go. See? So we are all for the stash busting and we're all for um, giving you ideas and things that you can do with your projects. Okay. So what we should do is say who we are. I've got you the wrong way around. <laughs> I am Lisa. <laughs> this is Joy. I'm Joy. And uh, we're coming to you from uh, This Isn't It in uh, This Isn't It. This Isn't It. This is Power of Court Townhouse Centre. In Dublin. Yes, and today we actually have questions, and we have demonstrations, and we have more ideas. And more and ideas, we're probably more than you want. <laughs> slightly more confident with the tips and the tricks and the tools here, although there was panic. Yeah, yeah. there was definite panic just before um, when you were watching the countdown screen for all of a minute there. But anyway, right? But anyway. But anyway, so uh, it is lovely to see the comments coming up. Um, oh, yeah. We have all of our um, pre-submitted questions to get to. If, 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 if This is very jam-packed today. It is, Very actually. jam-packed. But if we have time at the end, absolutely, um, we can do a little bit more of ad hoc things. Yeah. Let's keep an eye on the time. So we kick off with... What have we been knitting lately? What have we been knitting lately? What have we been knitting lately? Well, I finished my warp and weft. Mm -hmm. It is so squishy and soft That's with really the rios lovely. and the spiral grain, but mm -hmm. it has to be blocked, so you're not getting to see that yet. <laughs> and I started okay. last night. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Um, Isabel Kramer's uh, no, Callias, K-A-L-L-I-A-S. It's yeah. a cardigan. And it's kind of a modified brioche, and I'm doing it in warmy. There's the color there. Ooh, 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 See the one? Yes. Um, and I, like last night, I was like, oh no, I'll just do a little bit more before I go to bed, a little bit more. Didn't, didn't it's, even get enough sleep. It's Not enough sleep so because soft. it's so squishy. So this is um, a mano warmy, and it's backwards, but we can show you yeah. um, a little bit uh, so better. The, uh, I'll have more pictures there as I yeah. go along, but it's we'll, just a lovely kind of we'll throw squishy that in cardigan. Mix. Um, so, and she's making me want to make it. So this is what happens <laughs> is like, it's an, it illness, it's an illness, it's an illness. Um, so, and I've been making little sample bits for you guys for, um, the requested tutorial today. Um, so we'll get into that as well. So if it's your first time joining us, here's the way we're going to do it. We're going to do some, uh, pre-submitted questions. Mm -hmm. We have a giveaway tonight as well. So you can't forget about that. Um, we are going to do tutorial in a slightly different format as well um, and we're going to have some yarn suggestions and uh, what am I missing? Just general inspiration and chat. Chat, okay. chat, 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 chat. So the screen is very fuzzy. I might be on your end. Deirdre, I hope it's Can't only... Read. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it was very tiny, 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 tiny. Um, it looks clear from here, but... Oh, um, the Czech Republic, hi. Oh, very nice to see you hi. there. So, and we look great in Italy. I wouldn't mind look. I wouldn't mind being in well, Italy. I wouldn't mind being in Italy now. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that up there. Hang on. Hello from Italy. Do you look great? <laughs> um, okay. Good. So, what have we got? We've been knitting that lately. Oh, yeah, Jackie. Yes. Jackie has been. Oh, knitting yeah, Jackie. Lately. No, she's not. She's. This is. This is our substitute, Jackie. Today. <laughs> um, so, we're going to bring substitute Jackie yeah, up here. Ooh, okay. Um. So this is um, a lovely pattern by Melanie Berg. It's called Alive and Kicking. Um, and I'm going to go even closer, maybe lift up off the mannequin so you can kind of see all the detail in this gorgeous yoke here. It's meant to be very swingy, very A-line, and it uses a yarn that we haven't uh, really featured too much here. Um, it is two, actually two yarns held together, one that we haven't featured, one that we have. Um, so we'll go back. Mm -hmm. so Enjoy we, have the, those. we have Jaipur Peace Silk, which is just beautiful. And then she put with it the ivy, our new fluff, 
So it's alpaca, silk, and merino. And she got it together and it, it gave us that, which is just Isn't really that? beautiful. Yeah. No, the fabric's They're beautiful. They're both lace weights. So it's still not a heavy sweater, but it would be warm. Oh, yes. And yeah. I, I had to put a few colors together. Combinations. Ooh. Look at that. I should have actually said it's a cur, if you didn't know. <laughs> and this is color 41 of the piece silk. Can I pop you under here? Oh. Yep. Now we're okay. a little, there we go. We're a little backwards. There you can but show that one. We can say that. Um, and there's another one. Oh, I must fix this camera. Okay, so okay. Uh, townhouse yarns, uh, ivy lace in shimmer. And the BC Garn Jiper Peace Silk. I think um, that now would be really stunning as really, well. Really, really gorgeous. And what number did you say? Color 25. Ooh, everything's slightly... That, that's the tech problem that I had just before we started. This was <laughs> rotated and now it's not. Um, and then this is Trench in Ivy Lace. And color 37, 37. in Jiper. Um, I think that would be just gorgeous. Yeah. So we're out of focus, I think, a little bit. Well, let's try. Let's go back to us. Let's go back to us and see where we are. Um, we might be at, were we a little soft focus, are we? Hmm. Hi, Angeles. <laughs> Who is in Italy? Who <laughs> is, yes. Um, okay. Oh, that looks clearer to my eyes now, whether it's just my glasses or hmm. not. I don't know. Okay, well, I tell you what, I'm not going to do super... Um, we might disappear altogether. Yeah, let's not, let's not mess with this. Let's just we'll, focus on the old line. We'll, we'll take that. I need it, she doesn't. We will take that under consideration during the next time. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Okay, so um, you missed the sweater also. Okay, listen, we're gonna, I'm going to bring up our shared Ravelry screen so that we can show you all of the things that are featured right. here today. Um, and then we, we'll, we'll go through it bit by bit. That's yeah. okay. Um, I think I'm a little delayed here. Okay, so, but as you have gone <laughs> um, and been very good and sent, sent in your uh, questions ahead of time, I'm going to just jump into some pattern questions right. um, and some uh some of the things that were submitted by people ahead of time. Okay. Um, so how do people, and this is where I'd love to see in the comments as well, you guys jumping in with your ideas and advice. Um, so this is a very collaborative yes. endeavor, yeah. right? Um, everybody probably has a different way. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. um, so how do you store your stash and keep it fresh? Well, uh, I had a moth issue. Mm. No, I don't know. I used to just have it like in, boxes and bags and whatever yeah. but I had a moth issue um last year was it I can't remember but it scared the wits out of me so I have everything packed in I got these Ikea boxes in plastic mm. and like that I know sometimes I go in and I've forgotten I have stuff and I take it out and I have a look at it but it's it's all about moth protection I'm afraid yeah so regular it's, it's a phrase regular stash tossing Yes. You know, get yeah. in there and yeah. play with your stuff and yeah. investigate it. Because you do like, forget. You yeah. do forget what you have. Oh, so you do. You do. That's but what I do. And you, I mean, the ideal would be, I'd love it. And I've seen people have it. Like, you know, these kind of um, cupboards with glass doors and yeah. all their stash behind it. Yeah. But I'd, I'd still be afraid. Little oh, concerned. Point. But I think that's the thing is that when you... Uh, it, what, what happens is clothes moths, right, which are kind of, di they're quite different. They're the ones you'd see on your window yeah. um, at night. Yeah, trying to they're get not the light. ones. They're not the ones. They love, like, dark corners. Mm -hmm. They love, um, yeah, just kind of being undisturbed. Um, yeah. So actually going in and sort of shuffling Moving them things around. around. Um, yeah, and does help. It really does. And then it gets, you know, you get re-inspired by something yeah, else Yeah, because you you've forgotten it. Well. It's like, oh, I forgot you know? I had that. That's happened to yeah. me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, so definitely a bit of that. I mean, putting How do you store lavender yours? sachets and all that. Well, I've had them because I've been moved oh, in yes, for a little while yeah, in yeah. IKEA boxes. Right. Um, but now there is actually a, 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 a glass cabinet that we used to have here in the shop that I might oh, reuse. But again, it'd like be I lovely would, to have it out where you can see yeah. it and remember it. Color coordinate, like yeah, the oh, rainbow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though it oh, makes no know. sense for planning projects. No. Zero. Like no. I was in a yarn shop <laughs> years ago when. They had, it was all arranged by colour and it was the most beautiful space to be in, but the most kind of frustrating way to shop, you know, because you couldn't figure out what was water, you yeah. know, to fix bit, yeah. bit with your project. So, um, but maybe for my personal stash, I could indulge that. You could. Um, so let's see. Uh, currently in plastic massive bags. plastic bags. Yeah. Hang on. Um, and 
from a, uh, from a house move, okay, but you'd love to have in a cabinet and show. Exactly, yeah. yes. Um, what else have we got? Um, yummy colors and uh, very good. And, so, and Deirdre was in yesterday uh, after the hospital to treat yourself and you're looking forward to visiting us again. It's fine, we'd love to see you. Um, but yeah, so I think the general thing is yeah. that you need... Um, uh, protection, just protection, <laughs> protection, um, and just keep yeah, keep playing with it and, and, yeah. and use it away. So, um, okay. So our next question came from: Are there is there any knitting events coming to Dublin specifically um, from the Lightly Things? So thank you for your question. Um, I the answer is no at the moment. Um, no. I know the knitting and stitching show are going, or they're talking about having one in Belfast. Ah. Um, and encouraging people to come up from uh, from down south to Belfast, um, but I'm not. Uh, I couldn't tell you whether that's 100 percent no. definitely going ahead either. So it's sort of g- gathering some interest. Brexit kind of. Brexit is Brexit mm. has really affected we, a lot. What of hasn't stuff. been said about Brexit I know, that we could say? I know. Um, but but there, there is one coming up. Down yeah, the country in Doolan. Yeah, in yeah. Doolan. Um, let's, let's knit. knit. <laughs> <laughs> it takes us a while. Let's knit festival. Yeah, yeah. Um, down in Doolin, it's a one day festival. Yeah. Um, and actually, let me see. We had the next question, which was, "When is the next Stitch Social?" Which is, um, we did best. enjoy it, didn't we? We did. It was great fun. Ooh, and I was, was good. Just talking to Marion outside oh. just before this um, about our next date and what we're going to do and everything like that. So uh, we are going to be having one. It's going to be. Early December is the plan. Early December. Christmas. October. Christmas. October crazy. November we catch up on ourselves. And then yeah. we figured, look, let's do Christmas. Let's have a festive stitch oh, yeah. social. That'd be lovely. And when the lights are on in here. Oh. And everything is just oh, so yes. pretty and Christmas. Yeah, we it's love like, it. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be really, really, really good. Yeah. Um, so I did have to put a reminder in for myself, which was, don't forget we have a live <laughs> giveaway this evening. Um, so we're going to be doing a little fastest finger first question later on but of course you're gonna have to stay tuned you're gonna have to keep watching and our giveaway is one of the it's a it's a ticket and a a participation uh, in the yarn tasting event so you're going to get all of your little samples um sent out to you in the post or click and collect or collect not even click we're going to give it to you um and uh, so that you can take part in our virtual yarn tasting event which is coming up on that that's that's an event that's coming it coming is. to your living room it it's not is. coming to dublin but it's coming you to don't even room. have to leave your house yeah bring your friends around have some have a few few a little yeah possibly um and, <laughs> and do a yarn tasting together uh so we're going giving away a place at that um and one of the questions that we had during the week or from a few people which was you know what can you make from your yarn tasting samples um, and so what I did was I brought in, this is one of my favourite hats. It's really ever. gorgeous. I love it. Favorite hats, um, which is the sample that I made. It's called the Sea Glass Hat. Um, and I made it with uh, the yarn tasting samples from the last time we had yarn tasting um, mixed with a teeny, teeny, teeny bit of my stash just because there was something there. Again, I was tossing and my know, stash. And, I forgot to yeah. tell you, there was a lady in with a sweater on her. <laughs> sweater on her. Yeah. Anyway, over the last week. And... What she had done was, so it was a basic plain sweater, but every so often she had piece. Now, it couldn't have been that long a piece of yarn. Yeah. She had a piece just knit, like say from there to there, knit in a different colour. And she'd left the end bit out on the front. So it had kind of gotten um, felted a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, we all actually in turn went over to her and went, your sweater tell us more and it yeah. was, that's all she did she had all these lovely bits of yarn different colors mm. so it was there and it was there it was the, she said i i just did it when i felt like it Very so good. i just thought that was a really good that. idea i love that that's so, super so they and yeah. odds and ends and bits and pieces there is a little bit more than odds and ends in your sample oh there you know, is getting there five is. to ten grams but it's just an idea it's, I like it. And I the like other it. thing that really small um, amounts of yarn is great for is the uh, Rusamine technique, uh, yes. the Estonian knits technique yeah. that Alex Bird teaches. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some beautiful um, mitten patterns and things that you can add in, embellish embellish your sweaters and everything. With and I love, I love making 
fiddly little things. She does, she's a, she's a, the queen of fiddly little, little things. Yeah. Sweet. Um, yes. So I use all my bits for that too. Very good. Very good. I um, really need very much. I'm going to bring back, uh, one little thing about um, mats here. So Louise says she has small oh, no. fabric bags with dry lavender amongst your skeins mm. and knits. Yes, and it's yeah, true. The smell, lavender is good. It is a deterrent. It's a deterrent. And you can get cedar, cedar bowls mm -hmm. as well. I have those in the boxes and then I get these yeah. sheets that are supposed to, they, you know, tear off sheets, which I would change every six months. Yeah. It depends on how intense you want to get about it and how big of a problem well, it, it is. Well, just I lost know. a couple of shawls over it. Like, no. Not right. Not right. We don't like that. Okay. So, don't forget the live giveaway this evening. And next question. Okay. Here we go. Uh, so, DK Cassidy needs a pattern idea for two knitworthy sisters. That's very good. Um, I'd like to make cows for them. And you're thinking two color brioche. Have we any ideas in DK weight yarn or thicker? So, two color brioche. Here we go. Bells, whistles. Okay. Um, and hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We're there. So there far. Again. Um, there we go. Ah, uh, I there see. We I go. knew we were there somewhere. Hold on. I beg your pray. Come, 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 come. You go away. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> for a second. fine. Uh, here we go. No. Happy days. Okay. So, what I'm showing you on the screen right now is um, a is is here we go um no oh guys just <laughs> laugh at me okay what i'm showing you <laughs> is a beautiful screen that i cannot seem to access here we are and this is our bundle of patterns for that are being featured today uh, on this podcast. So TIK Live podcast episode. And what we do is we will have this shared link in the description um, after the, uh, the episode is done. Okay, so our question that we are tackling is the DK Waste Two Color Brioche Shawls. So you can see... Lovely Ashling has put in DK plus brioche yep. cowl here. Yep. Um, and you've got a few different options. So we have the worsted brioche bandana, DK brioche bandana cows, a lot of bandana cows. Um, the break and tide cowl from Mama, oh, not from Mama Likes to Make, from <laughs> Tiff Nealon. <laughs> Tiff oh Neelan. my goodness, we did the shawl version of this. <laughs> yes, it's fantastic. And it's got a lovely tassel on brioche. the end of that as well. Um, if you want to go a little bit more straightforward in your shaping than the tallow cowl, um, is the uh, is another great option. Mm -hmm. I like the drawstrings mm -hmm. on that as well, mm -hmm. actually, you know? Yeah. So you can have a wee look at that. And then I think what we have is um, some lovely yarn options for that too. Now, we didn't get... Um, we did not get... Uh, we... Do, do, do. So, two colour brioche cows. We're down here. Okay. A few options. Oh, I promise we know what we're doing here today. <laughs> <laughs> there is just too much going on. Um, so you were looking for a DK weight or a thicker. So we went with uh, Origin. Um, I can't seem to get that lined up. Um, so this is the beautiful Walcott Yarns Origin. And it is color um, in spruce on that side. And grape, grape blossom, yes, on that side. So they would be absolutely fantastic beside each other. Um, we didn't really get a color option from uh, the questions, so we're just going to throw in a few more in the mix. <laughs> so the original natural shade here, um, which is Lighthouse and then marigold that's lovely like isn't that nice yeah. Yeah. yeah so i mean you've got two sisters so i'm going to presume that their tastes are very different um, and that because uh, i know my two sisters are very different as well in what they would like um, and then we have some uh rios in the mix too i really i'm gonna bring this up just a small bit so you can see that um this color ankara green is absolutely gorgeous um, and we can pair that with lavanda too so loads of options there i think joy has got a few more yep uh let me see if i can line it up this is jury dk so we have pure majesty which is just stunning and oasis which has kind of lovely colors in it if i turn it around and you see it properly just have to get used to this system so that's that, and then a little bit of festivity there with spiced plum and smoke and mirrors. I think that would be lovely. Mm. Nice and seasonal. Yeah, 
I like yes. it. So hopefully you see something in the mix there that uh, catches your eye. Let's see, and that you're watching along. Um, Angie Evans, we'll go, we'll go back to questions. I'm not going to get distracted. Okay. Um, so then the Nitchen, I love that username. Um, but you were asking about the best sweater patterns from the Irish designers, designers specifically. So if I say Irish designers, who are the two names that come up to your mind? Carol Feller and Albina McLaughlin. There we go. That's what we've got. That's what we've got. Um, so. Mind you, we should also say our own Michelle. And our own oh. Michelle. Now, she, she hasn't has designed an iron sweater yet. <laughs> no. I don't think so, anyway. No. Um, but let's let's have a look um, at what, what we came up with here on the yellow screen. Oh, that was much smoother. Phew. Um, <laughs> okay. So, in oh, the yes. mix. I love that one by Carol. Isn't it just it's gorgeous? Really nice. Yeah, so this is the Curda Kurda. card. Again, I think we'll bring that up so we can see it a little closer. Um, and, oh, wow. Yeah. It's the saddle shoulder. It's, yeah. uh, it's the, like, intertwined cables here at the back. Yeah. Um, it's it's got a little bit of shaping in there, too, I think, in the mix. Very nice. A little kind of more contemporary. Um so that's called Curdock by Carol Feller. Um, and then let's show Braids. Oh, I glass. like that one. Yeah. Yeah. We see, we just fans. We're just fans. I love her photography as well. She's yeah. always got something really good. Something, something different. Yeah, exactly. So funnel neck. But if you didn't want to go mad nice. on the Aran aspect, but you're yeah. getting the cables down the shoulder on the front, it's just really lovely. That's it. It's nice to see the detail up a it little is. bit closer there, too. Very, so, very nice. Um, so there are a few, um, but there is also the Dahlia sweater, and there is and Carol does Willock. have a few more, so she does, yeah. yeah she great a um, uh, book a few years ago called Contemporary Irish Knits, yes. isn't that it? Yes, there were some lovely and ones in that, yes, um, there really were. So, um, okay, so I hope this is all going okay. <laughs> As I say, this is the first time we've done the questions and then the, the answers in this way, questions and then the answers. <laughs> um, but uh, we can we can mix <clears> it up. Um, but this is a good one because I think this is kind of yeah. universal as mm -hmm. well, right. Mm -hmm. Pattern ideas for Christmas teacher gifts, and you're right to be thinking about it now. now. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody thinking about making Christmas yeah. gifts yeah. now. Yeah. Um, preferably one skein wonders. Again, very sensible, the regular chaos. We like yeah. this. We like this. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what we came up with, and it, like there are, this, have you a one skein wonder in your world? One skein wonder where you go to? Um, probably a hat would be my main thing, or like that, a cowl. Yes. You know, a nice cowl. Funnily enough, if you want to pull up that sparkly wonder there beside you, that is Elberg, isn't it? Yes. That's the name. It was last year's Christmas yarn. Christmas cracker. So. Wait till you see it this year. I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she's, got an an <laughs> she's got an insight here happening. I was being bold. I'm not supposed to say. Anyway, there's a gorgeous hat. It is really, really, really lovely. Really, so that's really a nice, nice one skin wonder. And that uses a double knit yep. yarn. So it's... um. Love the uh, wash merino Let's sparkly. See. Now, if you can't get the this, this was a limited edition sparkly yarn, yeah. so not. not but any any double knit will do. Yeah, we'll do that. So her. that's nice and Christmassy. We can yeah. get a lovely color yeah. like that. Um, and then we did also have a few other options on the one skin wonders. Uh, there's one of your gnomes. Look. Oh! Not a gnome. Gnome. So gnomes. now they take a little bit of time because they're fin they're small, like they're details finicky. They're finicky. and stuff like that. Only so for special people. Very special people. There are a few special people out there who got them. And then things like shawls from uh, close to you from Justina, yes. uh, yeah. Paris in Berlin as well. Um, loads of really cute. Like this is this is one of those another shawl type bandana yeah. bandana cowl mm -hmm. thing. It looks mm -hmm. like a shawl, mm -hmm. but it's yeah, it's yeah. Um, in in the mix there too um and then oh there's the elberg that's, that's me socks socks if you're a sock knitter pretty cool give I'd socks be a special teacher though I would have thought. very special teacher very 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 special yeah. so but there's definitely a few ideas there and again you can check out the link after the, the after the show the show the show uh but there are some lovely ones game wonders something like this tinsel mitts so bring those up those yeah, ones up so you mitts. can see those um optional little turn backs um or not, and they're knit on a, on a thicker um, yeah. gauge. Yeah. So, um, but again, if you're doing your Christmas knits, <laughs> start them now, and make sure, like our earlier question was, that the people are worth it. Nobody worth it. 
need to be knitworthy. Knitworthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's nothing worse than giving things to oh, people God, that you've no. made. And we they don't appreciate them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I like that. That's it. Um, okay, so oh, your, your gnome is getting a lot of loves. Um, I know, my gnomes. loves. Don't know gonna... how many of them. In fact, there are quite a few. But there's one in Norway. There's one in um, Scotland. The one down the road of Maureen. There's, there's so one, many. There's two here. There's one out in Townhouse Yarns. <laughs> okay, someone has a go go to one skin wonder, which is the bulletproof Aran mm -hmm. hat in soft and oh. So Louise, that's a suggestion We're from. We're gonna have a look at that one. Suggestion from the ranks. Um and. So Someone else, hold on, Sierra, uh, a YouTuber watched it, the Penny Gloves Fingerless Mitts for Teacher Gifts last right. year. So yeah. a couple of good ideas there as well to add into the mix. So yeah. thanks for letting us know about those. Um, I like the collaborative effort. It's good. Oh, it's good. It's good. Uh, okay. So uh, the last one in this in this segment, um, <laughs> can you recommend a good Let me go to the first time? <laughs> then, we get, then we go to the other <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is what we're here for. Okay, uh, can you recommend a good first time cuff down sock pattern? So once again, people, if you've got to go to, let us know. But we do have them on the screen, um, and uh, they're they're not that. They're not that at all. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Oh, the best laid plans. Do you know what? <laughs> I'm going to leave that for now. <laughs> There's some wonderful ones by Tin Can Knits. Um, and then there are um, a few other ones in the old group there. Um, and Albina's as well. Oh, Albina's. Albina. Yeah, the cuff. She does, a, like, one of their patterns, the integrated sock. Yeah, she uh, does it both ways. Toe up, cuff down, all of that yeah. fun stuff. Yeah. I'm going to give this one last try um, and see. Can you see that? Yeah, there's some socks in the mix. There is... Sorry for the quick down, scrolling. Sorry for much. the quick scrolling, folks. Um, oh, yeah. Rye oh, Light and Gift Socks and everything there. Yeah. But yes, also Albina McLaughlin and we can add them in. Um, Kira Marie Fleming, you've you've added in Tin Can Knit Socks and Iron Weight as well. Yeah. yeah. So uh, loads and loads and loads of fun and games and things to play around with there. Um, okay. How is this all going? <laughs> I'm not sure today. It's fine. Right. fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Because then um, I'm not controlling anything. I'm just standing I here. I actually, this is ridiculous. So the setup gets more and more and more elaborate I know. as we do this. So I actually think my problem is my screen is too small and I need like to set up like a whole desktop thing here. Oh. Yeah. Maybe next time. Maybe next, maybe next season. I think it's okay. Um, as well. With, we're, you're working with us. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, so thanks for bearing with us. I'm going to get into the tutorial part of uh, today. So if you were watching the pilot episode last week, what do we what do we talk about on the um, the wildflower tunic? Wildflower tunic. Wildflower oh tunic. yes, yes, the out. crochet top yes. thing. So there was a little there was a little edge that in it's up there. Um, the on the website. So there's a little edge in this little um, little girl's tunic top where the pattern recommends that you uh, use a little crochet stitch to um, create your buttonhole loops. Um, and then last week, if you remember, or you can go back and look at it, it would be very, very pretty. Um, if you go back and have a look, you can see that I talked about it. It's an eye cord. What I did instead is an eye cord, applied eye cord red, and made the buttonholes with that. So, of course, when we put out the questions and said, or put out and, and, and appealed for questions, someone said, can you show us how you did that? So, here we go. <laughs> um, we pre-recorded it, and I'm going to talk you through it. So let's. Oh, that's a great idea. I will. This is news to me. Let's I didn't know about this. We'll see if it works. We're getting very um, here. Okay, but because of that, and because of the work that's involved in that, so we're going to limit it um, to uh, one tutorial per episode. But we'll try and get it. It does allow us to get a little bit more in depth. Yeah. And and to give you kind of real real concrete instructions for here. So, um, thank you, Deirdre. <laughs> thank, thank you, TL. You're telling us we're getting. Thank you okay. so much. Um, okay, that's. So, uh, I'm going to talk through an a how to do eye cord, applied eye cord. I love I love eye cord. I have it's to say, just so nice, so really, nice, really good. The edging that it gives is super fantastic um, on everything. So, um, and then we're going to show you um, how it's it, it's used to create a buttonhole loop as well. Okay, buckle up. <laughs> Tutorials and demo. So. 
There was the question from Anne. Thank you so much. It's a little small, but it says, Hi, Lisa, can you walk us through the I-cord edge that you added to the little girl's tunic? Um, and in not so many words, here we go. So this is a very, very quick, as you can see, refresher on what an I-cord is. So in case everybody's watching along and they're going, apply guy cord, what? Button holes, what? Um, I-cord is um, like a, the tiniest little tube of knitting, okay? Um, I've cast on three stitches here, and you can do this on DPNs, it'll be much easier. You can see me sliding it all the yeah. way down the end of the circular needle. Yeah. Um, and instead of, your yarn is now at the last stitch, and you bring it across the back of your work, okay? And that's essentially going to create just the tiniest tube. little tube. You're making a little rope, essentially, yeah. okay? Um, and you see this done with like French knitters and yeah. all that sort of stuff, yeah. okay? So again, knit three stitches, slide it all the way down to the other end, knit another three, and after you've done that for a little while, um, you'll get, in one second I will show you, um, that I cord rope effect. <laughs> yep. Okay, so far so kind of straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. It's very, very clever. So, uh, it is. But now we're going to apply this green color eye cord using a different color. It doesn't have to be. Um, just to show. Just to show. Um, to put it onto this lovely little swatch that we have down in front of me. And again, it's cast on three. And I, then I knit three or knit two, slip one stitch purlwise and yarn over. Okay. So knit two, slip one stitch purlwise, yarn over. And then dip into the edge of your work as if you would, as if you're just picking up a stitch normally from the edge. Okay, now we have five stitches on the needle, and you then slip the yarn over, or over, uh, cast it off essentially, and also slip the slip stitch over. So you and go cast back it off. to your three stitches. Back basically. to three. Now, helpfully, we'll do it again <laughs> so that you can see it. So, knitting two stitches this time, it's a little bit slower. Slip this third stitch purlwise, bring the yarn over, and then dip into your edge, and bring a new stitch through. So you okay. have five stitches five now Five stitches again. again, yeah. And it can be a little tricky, and I left this in, but it can be a little tricky to pick that yarn over up, but just because of the way it lies on the needle, so just try and dip in kind of low into the work, um, and then you take the slip stitch over as well. When you get good at it, if you can access it, you can do them both at the same time. Um, and I think I show that in a little bit too. So I think hopefully everybody's just concentrating because there's no comments. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to show, again, I've sped it up so that you can see what happens after a little while. Um, using this contrast color, you're getting um, a lovely ropey edge. Yay! It, it really does give a fabulous edge. Really nice. Yeah. Okay. So that's what was done in the tunic here. But then we wanted to create um, an opening for a buttonhole. So you probably guessed how this works. We stop applying the eye cord. We just go to raking it regular, regularly. Um, so knit three, slide all those stitches down to the other end, and then knit three, bringing the yarn across the back of the work. Okay. Um, and then it's up to you, kind of, it'll depend on the size of the button, yeah. how long you do this gap for. Um, so you can kind of eyeball it. You can um, decide as well when you come back to it where you want to reattach the eye cord. If you want to do like a loop that like sits back in up to the base again, or if you want to leave a gap. So um, I will show you what I chose to do now. Hopefully this is all very visible. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of highlighting the gap. And you can then go and apply, start applying the eye cord again. Yep. So, um, and the, you know what's super handy? right is let's say you've made a whole cardigan and you've gotten very um caught up in it and then mm -hmm. forgotten to do the buttonholes this is a way of creating it's a really holes yeah it is a very good on way the edge of anything yeah because you might just do a cardigan that's like yep. left open and then go yeah. oh i can't really do with the button I can't go back yeah nope so here we go applying the eye cord so slipping the yarn over slipping the slip stitch over and we're back connected again and that's There's where the buttonhole hole is Hey, that was much less stressful than trying to do that live. I know. <laughs> so, um, and I think I I'll carry on for a wee bit. Um, and then I'll show you the actual sample that I brought in as well. So we can show that um, a little a little higher up. Um, I think I'm showing that I'm picking up two stitches or trying to pick up two stitches at the same time. Um, but that's the full so edge done. There you have it. So uh, it is. Uh, 
I like Is it. Is that okay? Is I that okay? like it. So, I do. Whew, yeah. Whew. Yep. Um, yeah, and you can and you can carry on. So that's along the side of the of the work, but you can also you know bring the I, I can frame that whole swatch and eye cord if I want. Yeah. So you're just continuing to to dip your uh, dip your and, needle into and the side. When you get really used to it, you can do a lovely two color eye cord oh, edging. Okay. I've done it on a few Julie knits in Paris. Yeah, um, shawls. And, oh, it just adds something really special. It's nice. It, it is does. nice, isn't and it? And it's much easier than yes. you think it's going to be. Um, so you gotta try it. You do, you do, you do. So this ah, is the piece sure that I was working on just there, um, and yeah, once you start using it, yeah, you do. You oh, want to yeah. put it on everything. Yeah. Um, and then I did go around the corner, and I wanted to just say, I suppose if you're doing that, oh, what I did was I dipped into the same uh, point. Yeah. I did it twice. I think you could have. I might when I come round down here, dip in three times and see mm -hmm. like see. how it kind of yeah. sits, and then play with it. Um, but yeah, you can do you can do buttonholes all the way around yeah. with that. And um, sometimes, like on a neck, you know, if you don't want to do an actual rib, you can do one on the neck. I've done a few things yeah. like that, or yeah. like that even on those cowls, just to give it a little bit of strength. I think you know, an edging. I like it. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a very well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so it is. It's a it's a, a fun technique to know. A little it is. thing you can so obviously um, play this back anytime as well. We'll put it in as a little marker. It's um, in great for making little legs you know, on so. things too. Yeah. Little legs on things. I love a little eye cord, you know. <laughs> little eye cord legs. Um, <laughs> Alessandra anyway. said that's so cool. The applying of the eye cord and this way of doing a tutorial. Brilliant. Cool times too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alessandra. That's brilliant. Very, very so nice. our next question that we had was, um, <laughs> oh, everything down small again, um, but it was from Michael MCG, 1934. Um, I need some tips and advice on sewing jumpers together and you had to start over. Right. So this is a whole thing. Um, and what, what we're going to do is uh, break this into a little mini series. Um, okay. So um, when we come back next week, um, we will be demonstrating the first technique, which is mattress stitch. So you can wait for next that. week. Next week, yeah, I know you're not here. She's not here next week, but we will. We'll, we'll make it work, sort of. Um, so mattress stitch is coming, um, and then there will be uh, fake grafting, and then there will be uh, the combination of the two. So they're like the three main stitches that you need yeah. um, for sewing a standard type jumper together um so well i'm gonna have to ask you to hang tight and stay tuned and we will get those tutorials coming your I way i will just say mm -hmm. it was such an eye-opener to me when i because i obviously have been knitting many years before knitting in the round came in uh so i was always joining and i was sewing it like sewing yeah you know mm -hmm. from the wrong side the right sides together it was an eye-opener when somebody said do it with from the front yeah yeah it's and, and I mean it's so obvious but it had never occurred to me and that sure. completely changed my yeah. you know and it was perfect because you can yeah. see what you're doing and you can see if your stitches line up anyway sorry I'm interrupting no now. you're not no what I was gonna say is I'm not sure that it's that obvious like because most patterns say sew things up yeah so just yeah. so and you're like well how yeah you know using what technique and most people the the way they understand sewing is from um, from sewing woven fabric, sewing. <laughs> yeah, um, and that's you put the right, the wrong side, yeah. the right sides together, and you sew from the wrong side, and you create seam. And, and then you turn around, look, and go, "Well, oh, this looks awful." Yeah, <laughs> knitting it does, you know. It does. So okay, so there's a reason, and we'll explain all of that. And we'll get into the details of um, mattress stitch and um, the how's the how's the why's the wherefore is and the yeah. the inside outs. Okay, uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, fantastic. Okay, we're surviving. Is I cord stretchy? is the question from the editor hmm. it is a, you yeah. know it is it's knitting you know as long as you don't do it mad tight just yeah stretchy. Stretchy. um it is it's yeah it has an elasticity to it um i suppose it does matter on an edge what size needle yeah. you use making yeah. sure that you've got Not the to right do it too tight yeah, yeah. Do you, um when I'm saying you're pulling the yarn around the back of the work, yeah, it's not strangling it either. You know, no. like it's just drawing no. the fabric, yeah. just gently coaxing. Yeah. And then it'll all sort of settle down um, in its own The time. best thing to do is to try it, try it on yeah. a piece and see how you like it. Yes, exactly. And look, knitting, it'll, you go, like I said, I, I dipped into the corner twice and I might try three, three times. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then I'll figure out which one looks better and then I'll mm -hmm. 
either if I have to rip back, they'll yeah. rip back, you know. So it, your your yarn is still your yarn at the end of the day. And you is. haven't you haven't it cut is. or ruined anything. Or, yeah. Well, it's a bit yeah. like you know when you're casting off. This is, you're casting off here basically, but mm. you're doing it with an eye cord. Don't do it too tight. <laughs> <laughs> do anything too tight. Yeah. Nothing too tight. Yeah. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm going to squish this side. If that's all right. Um, so tutorial segment. Oh, all right stay again giveaway coming up but we have a few yarn suggestions uh coming your way um for all the lovely people who were wondering what's going on okay so uh yarn suggestions for the weekender crew sweater okay oh it's not big enough at all so the weekender crew sweater by andrea maori please maybe in a blue green vibe okay so uh if you're familiar with the weekender sweater by andrea maori it's uh, mm -hmm. we have a sample here it's absolutely gorgeous but it's a boat boat neck boat yeah it's a boat kind neck. Of a slit neck, yeah, um boat it is so uh this time and it's linked in the ravelry uh bundle as well if you're interested in coming and checking out the pattern uh but uh this one uses a dk weight um, a crew neck because more, oh, you know, care? yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, there is DK in here. We need to label the baskets. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in a blue, well, there's blue green vibes here. Okay, so um, I'm going to show uh, the overhead here and you can bring them into the mix if that's all right. So, here's a few of our ideas for that. So, we have Dory, whoops, I'm doing it the wrong way around. There it is, is it? Yeah. Sorry, I can't get it straight. There we go. So this is Jury DK in petrol, which is just beautiful colour. And then we have, yeah, a few do the straights. <laughs> That's Eha, which is more navy blue, whereas the petrol is kind of a tealy colour. Uh, oh, and then we have um, fleece, the blue fleece Lester. Blue fleece Lester. Blue fleece. fleece. I can't say that It much. is hard to say. And that's uh, color oh, well, 1041. And this one is, um, this one is called Brook. Oh, I love that's the one I use for the sideways. It <laughs> is the side, yes, side by side. Gorgeous. So that is, yep, yeah, Brook, and it's color 1040. Oh, and this is our new, swaps. sorry, just our new DK. Is. Yes. So. Mary Marino. There's a lovely, kind of a pale green. It is color 19. I think that's really nice. You see, we've gone, we've done your little greens and your blues. So this is color 25, which is really nice too. And then of course we have our old faithful, which is lovely, our uh, Rico Merino DK. And it's actually, you can't really see that color very well. It is having see, a moment, it's, doesn't it? It's, it's having a moment. It appears to be a little, it, there's mu it looks blue there, but it's, it's actually got quite, a, oh, there it is, that's better. It's got a greeny hue to it. Really nice. Yeah, nice. More petrol colours again. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I do like petrol. So loads of options there for uh, the Weekender. Um, and yeah, and Andrea's patterns are always just so beautiful. So it's yeah. a lovely, little bit simple thing otherwise, but just yep. given the option of the crew neck for people who don't like things. Yeah, so I, I have to say with the, uh, the Weekender, I just, I found that... Oh, I, I like I like a bow neck, but then yeah. but that's it. It's each to their own. So you've yeah. got you've got options. Um, so uh, great. Uh, so sorry about the small text again. This is recommendations for shawls and yarns for someone going through cancer treatment. Okay. Um, so first of all, I'm very sorry yeah. to hear that, and um, unfortunately, they're not not uncommon at all that we get asked about uh, things no. like this as well. Um, what we tend to recommend, um, well, first of all, it just has to be soft. It, you know, it really does. It can't be like nothing with the, any hairiness to it either, oh, because oh. Um, when people are going through chemo treatment, um, their skin can get much more sensitive. Um, yeah. So even if they're perfectly fine with like a kid mohair or whatever in normal times, yeah, um, yeah you want to just stick with um, really smooth, rounded yarns. So oh. um, generally um, a like a for warmth, a super soft washable merino, and um, yeah. the super wash merino because that's it does kind of take the the any of the hairs, the hairier parts, so smooths the surface yeah. of the yarn. Yeah. Um. So and then just from from the general internets, um, there's a lot of recommendations of like Pima cottons and yeah. um more uh yeah like organic cotton fibers as well. So, um, now it did come up with um. One or two things when you ask for a shawl, um, you know, I'm not sure about uh, it, wh where, where my mind went. Like, I'm, there's, there's two ways, okay? 
you might want to make just something like a really special lacy shawl to show this person that you, you care a lot about them to do something mm-hmm. more more intricate or involved or you might just be looking for pure comfort yeah. you know uh, so on the I went with the pure comfort angle <laughs> and and thought about um, a, a shawl that could also double as a blanket yeah okay um, and again, I would ask, you know, if anybody has other suggestions or things um, that they've come across that might be suitable, definitely mm-hmm. let us know. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully I can get this uh, up on the screen just to see, can I get um, the, uh, um, the best will in the world. Yeah. Um, okay. Some of these patterns that I came across are... Up here okay so there's a crochet option here which is called the sydney shawl um and that's using an iron weight yarn so it'd be you're getting there yeah. a little bit faster as well yeah um and then the melting marl shawl was the next one so again I'm all all of these just doubling as lap blankets a bit of extra warmth yeah. a bit of coziness um melting marl shawl it, it does use a fingering weight yarn but it's they're held double so again uh, you're okay um knitting up a little bit faster and then i'll bring this one up just to show it um is the <laughs> i just don't know what window i'm on um here we go the blanket fort and is that just a good name oh like, i like yeah. it yeah so um blanket fort by sylvia madden sylvia mcfadden i'm sorry um and let's see if we can break this up. oh no too close too close um and so it does double up as a little oh that's nice shawl. yeah so they're all using slightly thicker yarns and um, we'll get to where you're going faster but this is a little bit of extra special um, and hopefully it will um, tell the person uh, that you're thinking of them and give them yeah. a lot of comfort. Um, so thank you for your question, and I hope that helps. Um, okay, the next one. Okay, hang on now one second. Uh, Patricia, sorry, I do want to bring uh, just one of the comments in there. Um, so, oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi crochet. Oh goodness. Oh me. Patricia. Hiya Patricia. How's it going? I'll make your I'll make your comment um visible here for one second. Um so you crochet for an oncology war unit and uh, as it has holes in it to you or you use, use crochet rather than uh, knitting. Okay, yes. I see what you're saying. Um so the holes helps um breathability and coziness uh-huh. as well. Uh-huh. So so there was one of the crochet options there. If we come across any more, we'll definitely add them into the um the bundle. Yeah. The bundle of that. So, um, thank you for that. Um, okay, so here we go. You're welcome, Deirdre. Uh, Deirdre, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Deirdre, you were so helpful. She's always very helpful. So you were so helpful with yesterday picking your sock wool for your follow along, and thank you so much. And she's a star. She is a star. Um, so good luck with your sock project. Um, okay, let's get back to the questions. Right, please, would you recommend some yarn suggestions for the cathedral? Uh, is a cathedral pattern by Melibeck? Let's see. Cathedral. You say tomato, I say tomato. Yes. Um, so this one is uh, Rios Origin or the new one from Ponty Soon is what we have. To. So I think that's this basket here. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, and if I can manage it, I will pull up the cathedral pattern as well while you're having a wee look at that. Um, yeah, best luck, Lisa. Okay, um, so the one that we are trying to find pretty pretty yarn options for is... I'm making everybody just so I know this, this one. one. Mm-hmm. I haven't come across it now, so here we go. Um, so, oh, it's by uh, Making Memories, ah. that Claudia Quintilla. Yeah. Um, and it is very, very pretty indeed. Let's oh, that's a, nice. Isn't that lovely? Oh, I don't um, need to be looking at something. No, you don't, you don't, you don't. But we're going to come up with some yarn suggestions for this. It uses um, a worsted weight worsted. yarn. So that's what we've got. And you want one with like nice stitch definition as well. Um, so that is why we are going to go... Um, and have a look at these options. Okay. 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 Well, I always think you can't you can't go wrong with Rios. No, I just love business. Rios. <laughs> so that's Anchor Green, 
and it's just so soft and squishy and I'll just give you the Rios option. Oh, there's my, is that it's, my colour? It, it is my Azul Joy's Profundo. <gasps> I love it. Just really gorgeous. We're on a very blue kick here. <laughs> and then we have Lavanda, which is kind of purpley with, yes. there's lots of shading in it. It's really lovely. Quite I don't nice know if I have to it. say shading, but it was nice. It's shading. lovely. Yes. And then mm -hmm. when we we showed you some of the origin before for the um, cowls, but it is a lovely, lovely worsted weight, and it has great stretch definition. And it has, yeah, it? yeah, it really does, and that's what you need for that lovely yoke. Mm. So there's some lovely colours. I don't know. There's something about labels being shown the right way around, it just makes me happy. I know. <laughs> so there's some gorgeous shades in that there. Um, there's so many and, options, really. Yeah, yeah. But all the, they're, they've got really good stitch def definition. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> okay. So hopefully some of those stand out um, and you like the look of them. Um, and then our final question of the evening. Again, a bit small. Um, so we, somebody, sorry, Knits by Louise is looking for one strand yarn substitution for a merino and silk blend because you don't want to hold the two strands together at once, mm -hmm. okay? So. Now, there, you're not alone. There are people who just, they really don't like the idea of this, of holding things together now. So I used them to. Yes. I got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> you do because it's, uh, there's so many possibilities and options and fun yeah. things. But... Yeah. We are here to help, okay? Um, and I know that you are uh, going to be making, <laughs> here comes Ash to the rescue. Uh, the pattern that you were going to make is called Minu, isn't that right? Whoop. Yeah, Minu. Uh, if, I, if I was organized, that'd be dangerous. Um, have you heard of Minu? I haven't. You have not? Let me uh, bring it on up. It is very pretty. Um, you can see I'm holding some yarn here. Ooh, that might... Oh, now listen, don't yeah. be showing me things. Give me ideas. That looks lovely. So here we are. Manu Cardigan by Louisa Rekoff. Um, and you can see that it was holding together knitting for all of Merino. And, uh, so a Merino and a, like, a fluff, right? Okay. Um, and it has gorgeous. So Look at these like wavy cables. What wavy, size wavy measles cables measles did you use? Um, and we will check that check out that now. Out. But I just want to show the people the nice things. It really is. Really um, nice. Super, super gorgeous. Um, fingering so a nice fingering. Nice ring. Equals fingering. Ooh. Mm. But it's knitting on four, four and, and a three. Mm. So, mm. yeah. Mm. So you're, you're giving us an L challenge here. Mm. So you are. So you are. Um, but 25 stitches and 36 rows. So it's, it's um, tight enough tension. Yeah, isn't it? But I suppose with the cables kind of, it's probably over the cable, yeah, the travelling and yeah. stuff like that. So I guess what we had come up with um, was uh, the DK weight from uh, Blue Please. Face Leicester York West Yorkshire Spinners. I, I, can, I just can't say that. No, blue no. Place. It blue comes blue out blue as blue blue place blue. instead of face. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So, um, because you were looking for a kind of brown option. Okay. So we think that probably would be knitted at it as slightly tighter tension to see what you're Ooh. going to have to swatch a little bit and see yeah. how that works um otherwise have we like a little slightly woolier sport weight probably some milla like a good big dark yeah um, i think so does i work. read that's quite oh, sorry, yeah that out of the way. that's okay this is um so Samilla. it's a real chocolatey brown um and that could work as well instead yeah. of yeah in fact I, I like that you're not going to have the kind of that's color 19 yeah, you're it's not going to have the there. No, that's, that's good mm. representation. There you go. That's there. better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think they are probably good options. Um, otherwise, mm. no. Mm. Mulling, 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 mulling. Because <laughs> it's a funny one, isn't it? It is a funny yeah. one. It is. It might be something in the sheet blend or something, or that's quite lightweight. Mm. Two strands of that held together. Mm. Okay. We will follow up with you after yeah. this, okay, and see how you get on. But it is a very, very pretty cardigan. I think those options there from like are worth watching, mm -hmm. um, and see how you get on. But uh, definitely, the blue face Lester is a little closer to the original pattern image. Yeah, um, so it's absolutely, absolutely good. And also, it was a good idea to do too is look in the projects on Ravelry. That's what yes. I would often do and see because there will be somebody who did it with just one yarn. For just sure, to give yourself sure. an idea. 
gives you some some context of yeah. kind of what's what's yeah. successful and what's not. And I know a lot of people don't aren't aren't that much of a fan of kind of swatching and playing around with things, but um, it's uh, it, it is really <laughs> worthwhile, especially for something like a like a, well, a project as yeah. gorgeous yeah. as that that yeah. you'd be spending your time on, you know. Yeah. So, um, so where are we at? Yes, we have to do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway because we're fine to the hour. Um, a very hard question. Oh, for so you. hard. It's difficult. So really, difficult. really intensely hard. Um, can tell we're being a little <laughs> um but just before i get into that uh oh yeah louise you can see why i was confused by the gauge thank you so much yeah you're yeah. Le- leading us down that way we're definitely going to follow up with you on that one i think um and uh oh and you did a test knit um so you knew ah uh, okay so sorry i'm getting getting some background context on this yeah. already so yeah it's gonna happen we're gonna make it work we will find something really nice um <laughs> so um okay saying nothing no no she's she's i'm not even going to bring that comment onto the screen <laughs> <laughs> okay folks uh we have a lovely yarn tasting ticket experience participation to give away to one of the lucky viewers um that are still with us after all of our ramblings fair play to you for sticking out this long <laughs> um i've got to find my giveaway slide and then we will go there with it go. okay now, if you haven't taken part in a sort of live draw thing with us before, the way we do it is we ask a question that's generally fairly easy and we give you two easy. options to choose from. So you're going to type either the letter A or the letter B into the comments and that's your entry. Okay. Um, can you pick a number between one and seven? Five. I was worried that you actually couldn't pick a number. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of a favourite number, so really. number five. <laughs> okay, so number five. So what's going to happen? Because of lags and internets and crazy stuff that happens, right? Our, our rule is it's the, the fifth answer, fifth correct answer that appears on Sorry. Ashling's screen. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, fifth correct answer that appears on Ashling's screen. She will take a screenshot. There will be no debate. Her decision is final. Um and will be the winner wow that was a long explanation so there'll be a question's gonna pop up you're gonna type either a or b into the comments the fifth correct answer ready, is the winner ready. of our yarn tasting tickets <laughs> all right man we got this you ready is our in-house yarn brand called a townhouse yarns or b paris court yarns you ready and there's a lack. There's always a bit like five or six, seven, eight. Did the people do this? Somebody's putting numbers. That's because they, they were waiting for you to pick a number. Just oh, so they suggest one. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, wow. Well, oh, listen, guys, you are flying uh, it. I told tonight. you it was easy. Flying it. Absolutely flying it. Um, so in a oh. second, oh, poor Ashlyn's screen is going to be gone. Bananas. But she will type into the comments, I think who's going to be the winner um so thank you all for taking part so enthusiastically um and i hope and I'm that you're really you. <laughs> yeah exactly i know jen would be very offended <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is going to be whoever shows up on ashton's screen as the fifth oh, answer home. sorry autocorrect is fighting with me here uh, home hope made Homemade. homemade. Yarn. Okay, Come so away. yeah, it sounds like homemade, but they all, that's it's Hope Made. Oh, company. okay. So, congratulations to Hope Made Yarn Company. Um, if you reach out to us after this, um, send us a, a, a message on Instagram or here or um, like we need to do create like um, so it has to be privately. We need to get your details so we can send you out um the the prize um and for everybody else if you. There are a couple of tickets still left available for the yarn tasting if you want to take part. Um, we will be covering uh, lots of different aspects of um, like yarn companies that are doing yeah. their best to make a difference, yeah. um, to, to approach things a little bit differently yeah. from an environmental, ethical, social, ethical. and ethical side of things. Um, so I really think it's important to draw attention yeah. uh, to, to those companies that are, are making a difference. Okay. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Six different yarns to taste. We'll all jump on here. There will be inspiration. There will be special guests. There will be spot prizes. Um, and it will be a lot of fun. So that is episode one. I really hope you enjoyed it. Joy's not going to be here next week. But we'll, we'll, I'll, pick, I'll pick another victim. Um, <laughs> so we will have what an episode next week. And we will also be doing a little special episode from, which I can't believe, Woolen Folk and Ryan Becker coming up just oh. in a couple of weeks' time. Um, so that is the, the, the schedule for the coming uh, coming. 
few weeks <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of fun and I hope that you will join us then I will take away the giveaway because that is all done and dusted um, and I will ask you to uh, like the video to subscribe to the channel to hit the notification bell this is how we do and we will see you I will see you and we next. might do some more twinning in the future hormones we will we will okay all the links to everything all the content is going to be down below after this your Ravelry bundles and the yarns that are um, referred to in any patterns and things that we featured so um, you can check that all out yeah. um, thank you once again for joining us we'll see you soon Take, take your food out of the fridge. <laughs> Glad that wasn't on the screen. <laughs> oh, I don't know where we're at. Oh, I don't know. Oh, some lovely people.